Hey guys, this is Frank from Detect America. As promised, we're going to show you uh, how to make a basic electrolysis unit, how to keep that unit safe, uh, what metals to use to get a certain effect or desired effect on some of the coins you may be trying to clean or stabilize, um, how to test for your positive and negative sides, and make sure you, you don't screw up your coins, hopefully. So uh, we'll be back in a minute and uh, we'll start you out. Okay, first thing you're going to do is you're going to grab your desired power source. I, as most of you know who've seen me on the page, I do not recommend power packs. The reason I don't recommend them, anything that plugs into a wall has a reserve of electricity, a reserve of amperage, which if you were to short out to one of your coins, that reserve is going to try and push more electricity to it. That can cause an arc, that can burn your coin. Uh, what we're going to do, since most of you guys are grabbing these things, they're very easily accessible. We're going to show you how using one of these, how to make it as safe as possible, and uh, still have some fun cleaning your coins, making the colors nice and true, and, uh, and saving some of your relics. Okay, one of the first things you want to do when you've when you got the power pack that you've decided to use is take a look at the wire. Uh, a lot of people ask me, they don't know which side is which. Um... Electrolysis, when done properly, will never hurt your coin. You'll never have an issue with it. The problem is, if you are to happen to hook this thing up backwards, it can destroy a coin very, very quickly. So take your power pack wire. You'll see it. It looks like a piece of speaker wire when you're looking at it. Well, take a look at it like this. The positive side, I'm sorry, the positive side of this wire will always be marked. It'll be marked with little white dashes. Uh, some are bigger than others, some are smaller, but it'll always be marked. Here's the problem. A lot of these power packs aren't made in the United States. They come from foreign countries. And more often than not, I have gotten these things where they have been mismarked. The, the hash mark side has been on the, on the negative side. Hook it up backwards, guys, and you're going to ruin your coin. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to test for the anode and the cathode side. And it'll make it real easy for you, and then you uh, you'll won't have any trouble with it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we'll take our end, and we are going to get rid of it. Then we're going to take a knife very carefully. We're going to split the two wires in half so we can expose the two poles. Now, theoretically, this, this one that's marked should be my positive side. That should be my anode side. I'm sorry, this should be my cathode side. And the part, the, the side that's unmarked should be my anode side. Uh, but we're going to strip it out and test it and we'll show you how to do that just so you can make sure. Okay guys, uh, this is the place where I tell you you should use the wire strippers uh, so you do it safely. Uh, I've been doing it a while so I generally don't. I kind of just heat up the plastic a little bit and then she strips right out. But I am not recommending that you do that. I don't need anybody burning themselves. And we're stripped out, okay. I'm gonna grab my meter, we're gonna plug this sucker in, and I'm gonna show you how to test for the positive and negative sides. Okay guys, we're all plugged in. These are hot, but they are low voltage, so it's not. you're really not gonna electrocute yourself. I like to use these cheap, uh, voltimeters, they're, they're about three or four bucks, and they have the probe wires already wired in. So you can't accidentally switch them up. The, the positive goes into the positive pole, the negative into the negative pole. So what we do, set, that, set your meter for 12, and just randomly pick your positive side and your negative side. Touch them to the wire. If the needle jumps forward, what's in your hand is the correct method. Uh, I'm sorry. If, it, if the needle jumps forward, then where the red probe is and the black probe is is your positive and negative. If you had them reversed, the needle will jump backwards, as you can see. So, if the needle jumps forward, then the hand that you have the red probe bin is your positive, the hand you have the black probe bin is your negative. And that's the quickest way to tell if you've got it right. We'll give you a little closer view. If the, if the probes are in the right position, 
the needle will jump forward as you can see if the probes are reversed the needle wants to drop back so just remember your red probe your black probe is negative your red probe is positive if the needle jumps forward these are the right positions to put your alligator clips on okay well for the sake of time we're going to jump right to the end uh, the clips are soldered on already now if uh, red clip for the positive red clip for the positive side black clip for the anode or negative side black is where your coin goes red is where your uh, conductive metal goes now if you are not a real soldering kind of person there is a product out there uh, radio shacks have it and some of the other electronic stores have it it's uh, it's called liquid solder just make sure you got a pretty good connection in here in the clip uh, you want as good a connection as you could possibly get you don't want to you want to limit the loss of electricity so if you can't solder a couple drops of liquid solder let it dry and you're good to go so we're all good to go we're gonna plug her in here's your container I generally like to use about an 8 inch container as deep as possible when you're using one of these when you're using a power pack um, if you're using a, a, a DC uh, uh, electrolysis unit like I normally build battery operated you can go smaller because you, and you'll get a more direct contact with the electricity between the cathode and the anode side uh, one of these I, I'm always a little hesitant about something that I plug in so more volume of water the better about three, three inches deep about six to eight inches wide uh, give you enough volume to control your electricity we're going to wind up having our positive at one end our negative at the other end and there's your secret weapon guys it's a little jump line that's going to be our third lead that's going to be our kind of a rough addition of our floating circuit and uh, we'll get into explaining how that works in a minute okay <clears throat> we're set up every, everything that we need to start our electrolysis process <clears throat> excuse me let me show you the coin uh, just to show you how how uh, certain I am about the process if I can, you can zoom in uh, the lights not gonna let us do it here guys this is an early 17th century lion and castle cop now what's cool about this coin is I don't know if it's silver or if it's copper there we go uh, it, it, most of the ones that we dug in 89 were were a copper strike uh, however this one came out of the ground kind of blackish in color so this is a 50 50 shot this could be copper or this could be silver the cool thing about a coin like this is we know that the predominant amount of coins that we pulled out of the ground were copper blend so that's the color we're going to shoot for um, and don't get confused with the copper pennies that you see today the new pennies they didn't look like that they look more like a flying eagle scent more of a bronzyish silverish brown color the cool thing about this coin is and, and any coin is if this is silver it doesn't matter what metal we use we're, we're aiming for the copper color but if it's a silver coin it's going to come out silver no matter what now it doesn't work in reverse you don't try and get silver and then expect it to come out copper if it's a copper coin you'll, you'll screw it up but if there's a chance it's a silver coin aim aim for the copper bronzy color it's not going to make a difference if it's silver it's going to come out silver if it's a bronze coin then we're going to go we're going to get that right color anyway so we're set up here let's, let's start off by, by listing our parts this is a piece of high carbon a uh, piece of uh, pure carbon from a high-end electric motor this is what I'm using as my catalyst metal um, my friend Bruce sent me some of these uh, first that real time I've really used them they're fantastic they can't plate and the color stays nice and true now if you can't get a hold of these they're not always easily accessible this is a piece of high carbon a chunk of high carbon steel cut from a railroad spike uh, if you buy railroad spikes to chop up be careful they have to be marked HC not capital H capital C small C if it has the small C it's got a lot of copper in it and you're going to run into a whole issue about plating so HC is very high high carbon very low copper it'll dirty your tank a little bit you may have to change your water more often but that doesn't matter it's still going to keep your colors true this is a copper pin that I use I'll, I'll show you what we use that for in a minute 
Okay, so we're all plugged in. We're all soldered up. Here's our, our, our negative side is our cathode. Our positive side, no, again, I always screw it up. Our positive side is our cathode. Our negative side is our anode. The negative side gets the coin. So we clip our coin to it, nice and secure. Don't you know? You're not trying to gouge it in there. Just you really don't want to uh, damage the coin. Just make a good contact. We drop that in our empty tank. Here is our anode side, our cathode side, and this is where we're going to put our catalyst metal. So we're going to hook our catalyst metal here. Uh, the the uh, the brushes from the high-end motors are great. They come with a copper cable, which is inside the the uh, the um, carbon. Then we just drop that there. Now we don't want them going all around and touching each other. Last thing you want these things to do is touch, especially with a plugged-in power source. So here we go. My three spare large alligator clips. I've got a red and two black. So what I'm going to do is lock down this. Uh, and a, a cathode side with the red clip and we're going to lock down the anode side with a black clip but before we do that we want to make this safe we want to make sure that we're not going to arc uh, too much electricity into the circuit and arc to our coin and, and burn a chunk of coin out so here's our secret weapon we have another spare jump cable what we're going to do is we're going to connect this spare jump cable, cable to the alligator clip holding your coin drop it right in the water. We're going to connect the other end of that jump cable to a copper pin. Now, it doesn't have to be a copper pin. It can be a nail. It can be a washer. It can be absolutely any kind of metal. It doesn't make a difference on the anode side. It doesn't put anything out. It only receives the molecules from the cathode, from the cathode side. So we're just going to clip copper pin, because that's what I happen to have with me, and drop it in. Now, what we want to do is make sure the tank is saturated evenly. The circuit is flowing completely through the tank nice and even. So we're going to, we always want our carbon farthest away we can get from the point of our coin. So we're going to leave it at that end. We're going to stick our coin in this corner, in this corner of our tank. And we're going to take one of our black spare alligator clips and we're going to lock it in place. We just don't want it sliding around and making contact with our positive side. We're going to take the other end of our of our jump wire, our floating circuit, so to speak. It's a crude floating circuit. It's a floating circuit nonetheless. And we're going to kind of put it in the middle between the, the carbon and the coin. And we're going to clamp it there. So we basically have a triangle. We have our carbon at one end. We have our coin at the other end, and we have our floating circuit at the, at the, in the third point. What the floating circuit is going to do, it's going to split the amount of electricity coming off this carbon. It's going to split the, into, into, two, into two modes. One, is going, one part of the electricity is going to be going to the, the little pin. The other part of the electricity is going to be going to your coin. What that's going to do is cut down your amperage. So it's going to basically cut the amperage down by a minimum of 33%, if not more. And that's going to give us more protection against an arc to the coin. So with this much water, with the volume of this tank, this much water, a medium to low salt brine solution, and a floating circuit, we pretty much got it made in protecting our coin from any arcing. So here we go. Let's move this aside. Here's my, not Arizona iced tea guys, this is my brine solution. This is my brine mixture. Two parts baking soda. One part ground sea salt. Absolutely no table salt, nothing with iodine in it. Way easy to use table salt guys, but if you can clean this coin perfectly and you use an iodized salt, a year from now, you're going to start to see blotches on it. <clears throat> the iodine impregnates the coin. It cannot be washed off. Once that process has started with the iodine, your coin is going to die. You can't fix it. You can't arrest that process. It's over. So real easy. Just get cheap sea salt and cheap baking soda. Two parts baking soda, one part sea salt. Mix it up real good. In my gallon of water, approximately three heaping tablespoons of this mixture. Um, 
Now you can tweak that later. If you happen to put four in by accident, you're not going to kill it. As long as you're mixing in a gallon of water, it's, there's plenty of dilution to, to keep it safe. Plus, if you, if you put your brine solution into your tank here, and you notice that the reaction is not taking place very quickly, or it's taking way too long, you can take a little bit of your brine solution, drop it right in the tank, stir it up. All this is is your conductor, and you want to use as little as possible. You want to you want to inch your way up to the maximum amount you can use, because the less salt in this, the better. The less salt means the electricity has to work twice as hard to get to your target, and that chews up amperage. Everything about using a plug-in power pack is about chewing up amperage, leaving just the electricity, saturating your tank, and getting rid of the amperage. The amperage is what forces the electric to arc you know, uh, to to spark, to, to arc to your coin and potentially damage it. We get rid of the amperage, we're left with electricity, and the electrolysis will take place safely. So, we've already mixed our brine solution. Yep, there we go, set it. So we're going to put just enough brine solution to cover the coin. Now, your anode side, your cathode side, again, your cathode, 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 your cathode side of the coin, your red side, your positive side, you would like to have only the catalyst metal touching the water. You don't really want your alligator clips touching it because they're going to provide copper to the water. They could potentially screw up your coin. And <clears throat> you want the electricity only to flow directly through your catalyst metal. On the negative side, on your anode side, it doesn't make a damn bit of difference. You can throw everything in there. Your alligator clips can be in the water because they don't transmit anything. They only receive molecules from the positive side of the tank. So we got it in. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm going I'm to move the camera around a second and show you. We have a reaction. It's already starting. And uh, it's great because it's impacting very highly on the copper pin. And it's going very slowly on the coin because the coin is the furthest away. That's exactly what we want. The amperage is being chewed up by that copper pin, guys, <clears throat> and what's left over is hitting the coin. Will it take longer? Sure, it'll take longer, but it's going to be safe. It's going to penetrate to the core, not along the surface, and it's going to give you the proper color. So uh, let, me, let, me, uh, let me jump around. I'm going to move the camera around. I'm going to show you what the process is looking like right now, and I'll be back with you in a minute. Now, as you can see, our, our anode side, oh God, our cathode side, excuse me, our cathode side is bubbling like crazy. Fantastic. Uh, if we were using the high carbon steel, it wouldn't be bubbling yet, but the pure carbon is, is amazing. It conducts electricity so efficiently at almost any voltage. If I drop the voltage down to two or three volts, it'll conduct it just as quickly. And these pieces last such a long time, it's fantastic. But now we've been about five minutes in, and I can turn around and show you, we've got the process impacting on the coin now. Nice little bubble is on the coin. And I uh, can't really show you the pin right now, but the pin is bubbling too. So we've got the electricity split between the pin and the coin. And that's where we're going to let it sit for a while. Um, not, we don't have to rush through it and keep popping it out, popping it in. Uh, we're using pure carbon. We know we're not going to be plating. We have a simple light uh, saline solution as our catalyst uh, brine solution. And we have the electricity split. So we're splitting 50% at least, 33% at least of the amperage. So everything right now is low, slow, proper metals. And we're going to let it cook for a while, and then uh, we'll take her out. I'm going to show you a few tricks, and we're going to find out what kind of coin it is, if it's silver, in fact, or, or a, um, a copper bronzes coin. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, I wanted to show you what we've done now. As it was cooking, our coin was starting to develop a little bit too much of a copper color. I didn't, wasn't pleased with the color. So what we've done to tweak the color, we've taken the floating circuit, we've removed it. We've reattached it to the positive side. And instead of our copper uh, pin, we replaced that with my uh, a piece of silver catalyst metal. Uh, in this case, I use a uh, an old uh, Ben Ben Franklin half, which uh, since you don't really use it for a very long period of time, it kind of lasts you a long time. So we're cooking it a little longer now. We're tweaking the color up towards bronzish kind of color, where it should be. 
And uh, we're at this point, we're pretty darn close to being finished. So uh, give me a few minutes, and uh, I'll break her out and show you what it looks like. Okay, I cooked it to the point where I'm very happy with the color. Uh, as you can see, those little tiny like black blotches, they're not part of the coin. That's actually residue that comes out uh, from the debris in the tank. So what we're going to do is the last step, while it's wet, we're going to put a little bit of a pinch of toothpaste on it. And I know my coin guys are screaming and yelling, but trust me, as long as you do this wet, you won't abrase the coin at all. So uh, give me a second, I'll show you what we do. Okay, just a drop of toothpaste, normal everyday toothpaste, while it's wet. Don't do it dry because you can wear on the coin. But make sure it's wet. And just nice, gentle rub. We're not grinding into it. We're not trying to rip off the surface of the coin. We're just taking off some of that black debris and any uh, little abrasions that are at the surface. Okay, I'm going to dry her off. We're going to clean off the uh, toothpaste and I'll show you what she looks like. Final result. And there you have it, guys. We've got the right color. She's that bronzy silverish color kind of relative to a flying eagle scent and we revealed that in fact it's a 16th century coin it looked like a 1539 till we examined it closely it's a 1599 it's counter stamped 1663 and a roman numeral 4 stamped on the back i have no idea what that stands for but she's uh the right color She's treated to the core. She'll last a long time now. And uh, that's it. That's what we do. That's our electrolysis. And uh, any questions, you guys know where to find me. You can hit me up. Detect America at AOL.com or post to our page, Detect America at Facebook.